Turn with me, if you would, to the book of Matthew in chapter 16. Matthew in chapter 16 and verse 21. It says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. I'd like to preach to you tonight on this subject, the cross lying in the dirt. I'm going to talk to you tonight about the cross lying in the dirt. Let's all pray for this service. Lord Jesus, God, I'm thankful tonight for your spirit that I feel here in this place. Uh, I'm thankful, God, that you have filled this sanctuary with your love and your mercy uh, and your grace. I'm thankful, God, tonight uh, for your hand uh, that is in every one of these persons' lives, uh, leading them and guiding them ever closer to you. Uh, I'm thankful, God, tonight for the Holy Ghost that I feel in this place. uh, And, God, I pray that you'd open up our eyes uh, and open up our ears, uh, open up our understanding to the Word of God uh, and bring us all closer to your salvation uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, amen. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Here in our text, uh, it says uh, that Jesus began to show or to tell his disciples uh, how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders uh, the priests, uh, the scribes, uh, and uh, that he would be killed. Uh, Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. Uh, They weren't going to do anything to Jesus uh, that he didn't already know was going to happen to him because he was God manifest in the flesh. He knows everything. Uh, He's omniscient. That means he's all-knowing. He's omnipresent. That means he's everywhere all the time. He's omnipotent. That means he's all powerful. Uh, amen. Uh, that's who Jesus is. First uh, Timothy 3.16 says God was manifest in the flesh. Uh, and so Jesus, being God manifest in the flesh, knew what was in store for him. He knew when he went to Jerusalem that the chief priests and the scribes, uh, the Pharisees, uh, that they were going uh, to cause him to suffer, that they were going to cause him uh, a lot of pain, uh, that they were eventually going to crucify and kill him. He knew this was going to happen. Amen. Uh, Not only that, uh, he knew that this was going to happen all along because he was God manifest in the flesh. Uh, Before God manifest himself in the flesh, when he was sitting on the throne in glory, when he was up in heaven looking down on this earth, uh, and uh, this earth was in sin, uh, and he wanted to do something about that fact, that we were all living in sin, uh, and God loves us, uh, and God cares about us, uh, and he doesn't want us to die in our sins, uh, because the wages of sin is death, uh, and he doesn't want us to go to a devil's hell. Uh, He created hell for the devil and his angels, not for us. Uh, He doesn't want to see anybody perish. Uh, And so uh, while he was sitting upon the throne in glory, looking down upon this earth, uh, looking down upon you and I, uh, looking down upon our fate, uh, he decided to do something about it. Uh, He was moved by compassion for us. Uh, He was moved by his great love for us. Uh, He loved you and I so much uh, that he that is rich became poor that you might become rich. Uh, Amen. God, who is the King of kings uh, and Lord of lords. uh, God, who is the Alpha and the Omega. God, who is the one that was and is and will be forevermore, came down and made himself flesh uh, and was born of the Virgin Mary. And he had a purpose. He had a reason uh, that he came in the flesh. Uh, Amen. Uh, There was a purpose and a reason for everything that he did. Uh, The Bible lets us know that he came to seek and to save the lost. That's me. Amen. If anybody ever got lost here on earth, I can testify 
I was one of them. I took the wrong turn. I got off on the wrong step. Uh, I made some wrong choices. Uh, I did some wrong things. Brother Sherm, I don't know where he went, but he testified a little bit uh, in the past uh, how that many, many years ago uh, we used to uh, hang out together and uh, did some drugs, did some crimes. Uh, back in the 80s, I went to prison a couple of times uh, because of the drugs and crimes uh, that I was doing. Because I was lost. Uh, the Bible says that He came to save sinners. Uh, amen. Uh, that's me. I was a sinner. Amen. Not only was I breaking the law, not only was I out there doing things that society didn't like uh, and breaking the law, but I was also breaking the law of God. Uh, I was a sinner. Amen. Uh, and uh, I was doing things uh, that God does not approve of, uh, that the Word of God does not approve of. Uh, so I was lost, uh, and I was a sinner, uh, and God came looking for me. God manifested Himself in flesh uh, for me. Uh, Jesus uh, was going to Jerusalem uh, for me. Uh, amen. Uh, he was going to go and suffer, and He was going to go and die for my sins. Uh, amen. Uh, everybody say me. Everybody touch yourself, say me. Uh, amen. Jesus Christ uh, manifest Himself in flesh to save you from your sins. Uh, amen. Because you were lost. Uh, and because you were a sinner. Uh, hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, uh, we know that the uh, uh, angel spoke to Mary. Uh, and he said, Thou shalt call His name Jesus, uh, for He shall save His people from their sins. Uh, the angel said that his name was going to be Jesus uh, specifically because uh, he was going to save his people from their sins. Uh, and of course, uh, with a little research, we know that the name Jesus uh, is derived from the Hebrew name uh, Yahshua, which is short for Yahweh Hashua. Yahweh is the name of God in the Old Testament. Uh, amen. Hashua is a Hebrew name that means our Savior. Uh, and so uh, when Jesus took on the name Yahweh Hashua at birth, He was talk taking on the name of God. It says, Yahweh Hashua, I am that I am our Savior. There's purpose uh, in His name. Uh, amen. He had a purpose. He had a reason for coming and manifesting Himself in flesh. Uh, he knew that when he went to Jerusalem, he was going to suffer and die. Uh, when he got to Jerusalem, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, and there he separated himself from his uh, disciples uh, and he began to pray. Uh, the Bible says uh, that he prayed in great agony. Uh, and that he prayed until it was as if great drops of blood uh, were coming off of him uh, in his sweat. Uh, he was in great agony in his prayers. Uh, amen. Uh, the third time that he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, uh, let this cup pass from me. Uh, but if not, uh, amen, uh, not my will be done, uh, but thy will be done. Uh, in his manhood, uh, amen, uh, Jesus uh, was not looking forward uh, to the suffering and to the death. Uh, Amen. Oh, he knew he was going to suffer and die. But I'm telling you here tonight, he wasn't looking forward to it. Amen. Uh, he wasn't looking forward to suffering and dying any more than you would or I would. And, and I try to avoid suffering at all costs. Believe that. If I get a, a headache or something, I want Tylenol. I want it right now and I want three of them. Amen. I can't stand earaches. I can't stand headaches. Hey man, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Jesus knew he was going to suffer and die. Uh, and he was in the garden at Gethsemane. And he was praying, God, uh, is there any other way? In his manhood, he was praying to deity. God, is there any other way that we can save mankind? Is there any other way we can deal with the sin situation here? Is there any other plan? Is there any other option than me having to be in Jerusalem and suffer and die on a cross? Uh, and unfortunately, there was no other plan. There was no other way because sinless blood had to be shed in order to deal with the sins of mankind. And because of His great love for us, and because of the 
burden that was on his heart uh, for you and me. Uh, he went on with the plan. He went through with the plan. Uh, he continued on his way. Let's look in the book of Matthew in chapter 27. I don't have a PowerPoint or uh, any of those other fancy gadgets. But we do have a Bible and the Word of God. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 27 says, And the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed in the right hand, in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him, and took a reed, and smote him in the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were coming to a place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of the skull, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. And again in the book of Mark in chapter 15. Mark in chapter 15 and verse 16. It says, And the soldiers led him away into a hall called Praetorium. And they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it upon his head. And began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him on the head with a reed, and they did spit upon him, and bowing their knees worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him, and put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. And they compelled one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they bring him unto the place Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of the skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, and every, that every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. The king of the Jews. They had it right. They crucified him and put a sign over his head that said, King of the Jews. Well, he was king of the Jews. He was a descendant of David. He was the rightful heir to the throne. Amen. But he was more than just the king of the Jews. He was the king of kings. Amen. He was the Lord of Lords. Uh, he was God Almighty manifest uh, in the flesh. Uh, when he got done praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, a band of soldiers came to arrest him. When they came to arrest him, Jesus uh, spoke to them, uh, and he said, Whom seek ye? Uh, one of the soldiers answered and said, Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, after he said, Jesus of Nazareth, uh, Jesus said, I am. When Jesus said, I am, uh, he was referring to himself 
as the great I am. Uh, he was referring to himself as Yahweh, God of the Old Testament. Uh, Yahweh is the name of God in the Old Testament. Yahweh, by definition, means I am that I am. Uh, he is the self-existing one. He is the one from eternity to eternity. And so when he said, I am, uh, he was making reference to himself uh, that they were standing in front of God manifest in the flesh. Uh, and when he said, I am, uh, the Bible says uh, that all of those soldiers, the entire band of soldiers, uh, fell backwards to the ground. Uh, when he said, I am, just the power of revealing himself to them uh, knocked them all to the ground. And then they all got back up out of the dust and out of, off the ground, uh, picked up their, their spears and, and their swords and their torches, uh, and he asked them again, uh, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And they said, Okay, now that I showed you who I am, that I revealed myself to you, and let you know that you could not arrest me or take me by your own power, but only if I allow it. Now you can arrest me. Now you can tie my hands up with your little ropes. Uh, now uh, you can march me back uh, into Jerusalem under arrest uh, like some kind of criminal. Anybody ever felt uh, the cuffs? Uh, uh, anybody ever felt the leg chains uh, attached to the belly chains, attached to the handcuffs? You, you know what I'm talking about here. Hey, man. Uh, some of you do. I know you do. I'm not going to point all ten of you out right now. So, so they took Jesus, uh, hey man, uh, and they brought him into the high priest. Uh, and the high priest uh, made some accusations uh, against him, uh, hey man. Uh, and then they took him to Pilate, uh, and they made more accusations uh, against him. Uh, but they couldn't find uh, him guilty of anything. Uh, and they sent him to King Herod. Uh, and Herod couldn't find anything uh, to accuse him of. Uh, and so he sent him back to Pilate. Uh, and so they had one kangaroo court after another all night long uh, with Jesus uh, and they took him over here uh, in his uh, in his chains uh, and 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 they took him over there and they took him over here uh, and they made all these accusations against him uh, but they could not find a single accusation to find him guilty of not a single accusation because he was God manifest in the flesh because uh, the Bible says that he did not commit any sins while he was God manifest in the flesh uh, he was without sin amen uh, and I want you to know uh, that eventually they got around uh, to deciding that they were going to crucify him uh, eventually they got around uh, to deciding uh, that they were going to kill him uh, and so uh, they turned him over to the soldiers uh, when they turned him over to the soldiers uh, the soldiers took him uh, and they tied him to a post uh, and they got a whip uh, that was called uh, a cat of nine tails uh, and this whip uh, had several uh, leather uh, strips attached to it uh, and each one of those leather strips as most of you know uh, had pieces uh, of glass and pieces uh, of metal uh, that were attached to it uh, and so uh, when he began uh, when the soldier began to whip Jesus on his back uh, hey man uh, that that whip uh, with those uh, sharp pieces of metal would actually grab onto the flesh uh, and hang onto the flesh uh, until the whip uh, was ripped back off uh, of the flesh uh, taking uh, skin uh, and muscle tissue with it uh, and so they began to whip uh, Jesus uh, and they whipped him uh, over and over and over again 39 times uh, they whipped him uh, on his back uh, they beat him to within an inch uh, of his life uh, they beat him uh, and beat him and beat him uh, I want you to know something here today uh, that he was God manifest in the flesh uh, he was the king of kings uh, he was the Lord of Lords. Uh, amen. At any time, uh, he could have stopped it. Uh, at any time, uh, he could have put an end to it. Uh, at any time, uh, he could have uh, revealed himself uh, in all his glory and all his power. And he could have stopped what was happening. But he didn't. 
because of his great love for you and me because he loved us so much and he knew that he had to suffer and that he had to die that he had to take that route that road he had to go down that road all the way to the end he had to finish it amen he knew he was going to die on a cross amen but he went because he loved you and he loved me and he didn't want us to live in our sins he didn't want us to die in our sins he doesn't want us to go to a devil's hell amen after they got done putting the crown of thorns on his head and, and smiting him about the head uh, with uh, reeds, uh, with rods. Uh, amen. After they got done putting a purple robe on his back uh, and mocking him uh, and spitting in his face. Uh, after they got done uh, ripping the beard out of his face. Uh, after they got done uh, abusing him. Uh, after they got done, uh, amen, uh, beating him uh, after they got done uh, causing him so much pain and so much suffering. Uh, amen. They led him out. Uh, amen. To a place uh, and there it was. Uh, amen. There was the object of his desire. Uh, there it was uh, in all uh, of his glory. Uh, he laid his eyes uh, upon the cross. Uh, that's what he came for. Uh, that's why he got off the throne in heaven above uh, and rubbed himself in flesh uh, and went through that pain and that suffering and that misery was so he could die on that cross. Uh, and he beheld the cross uh, lying there. Uh, amen. And no doubt one of the soldiers uh, probably uh, hit him uh, with the butt of his spear, uh, amen, uh, or clubbed him upside his head uh, and said, pick it up, pick it up. That's your cross, uh, Jesus. Uh, that one's got your name on it. Uh, yeah, uh, pick it up, Jesus. Uh, that's your cross, uh, amen. Uh, and Jesus, uh, though he had been praying all night uh, in Gethsemane, uh, and Jesus, uh, though they had taken him uh, from one kangaroo court to another until he was exhausted, uh, and Jesus, uh, even though they had beaten him uh, and beaten him and beaten him, the Bible says, until he was beyond recognition. He picked up that cross. He embraced it. Amen. His hands, no doubt slippery with blood. He picked up his cross. Uh, amen. And he shouldered that cross. Uh, I don't know how big that cross was. Uh, I don't know how heavy those timbers were. But timbers big enough to crucify a man on have got to be pretty big. Pretty, especially somebody like me. You're not going to crucify me on a willow branch. You know what I'm saying? Me and Brother Eastridge have been putting fence in the last week. And we've been uh, putting uh, railroad ties in the ground. Eight-foot railroad ties. And uh, those railroad ties ain't no joke, let me tell you what. They're heavy. Very heavy. We dig a two foot hole in the ground and then we get a railroad tie and the two of us, uh, I mean, you could pick one, I could pick one end up by myself, but I'm not going to pick that whole thing up by myself. It's too big. It's, it's only eight foot tall and about as big around as this, but it's too big and it's too heavy for me to pick that piece of wood up by myself and stick it in the ground. And so we do it together. And we dig a hole and put a railroad tie in it. And dig a hole and put a railroad tie in it. And dig a hole and put a railroad tie in it. Friend, uh, we only got five done in one day. And uh, they're heavy. And I can't imagine how heavy this piece of wood was that Jesus uh, was carrying to his crucifixion. I don't know how big that timber was, but I got an idea that it was pretty big. Uh, Hey, man, uh, I got an idea that it was pretty heavy. Uh, 
I got an idea that after all that he had been through, uh, that that piece of timber was a heavy piece of timber, uh, and that it was difficult to pick up. Uh, it was real hard uh, to get it on his shoulder. Amen. Uh, and those soldiers, uh, they were right there telling him, Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick up your cross. Come on. Get it on your back. Come on. Get moving, boy. We're going to crucify you. You understand me? We're going to nail you to that piece of wood. He put that uh, piece of timber on his shoulder and he began uh, to drag it uh, in the direction uh, of Calvary. Uh, amen. Uh, he began to drag it uh, out of the praetorium. Uh, he began to drag it uh, down the Dia Valorosa. Uh, amen. He began to drag it uh, down the street uh, and there were crowds of people gathered uh, and they were mocking him uh, and they were laughing at him and they were throwing things at him and they were spitting on him. Uh, and the soldiers were there uh, all around him. Uh, come on. Uh, come on. Drag that piece of wood. Uh, come on. Uh, let's go. Uh, we got things to do. Uh, come on, Jesus. Uh, get that cross down the road. Uh, amen. Uh, get it to Calvary. Uh, amen. We're going to crucify you. I know that he was bleeding profusely. I know that his body was injured in a lot of ways. In a lot of places. I know his muscles were probably screaming at him to stop, to rest. They didn't want to obey the message coming from his brain. I know how hopeless he must have felt. There was no way out now. There was no way to stop. There was no way to change uh, his mind. Uh, hey man, he had made up his mind in the garden at Gethsemane. Not thy will, but thy... But, excuse me. I left that on for uh, some folks that might not know how to get here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus, uh, no doubt in his manhood, uh, felt hopeless. It was a hopeless situation. He was going to die. And I know when you're in a hopeless situation, uh, you have a tendency to give up. When you're in a hopeless situation... Uh, Things are harder to do. Jobs are harder to perform. Uh, hey man, uh, when you begin to give up uh, and you just don't feel like it anymore and you just don't want to play anymore, you just don't want to do it anymore. Hey man, it's so difficult to get your body to respond to the commands to do what you're trying to do. Hey man, uh, and I know that as Jesus carried that cross uh, down that street uh, toward Calvary, I know his body wanted to give up. Uh, I know it wanted to stop. I know I wanted to rest uh, and I know uh, that from time to time uh, he probably dropped uh, that cross uh, and there was a soldier pick it up uh, pick it up uh, pick it up uh, and he looked at that cross uh, he looked uh, at that device uh, of torture and death uh, and he embraced it uh, with his bloody hands uh, and he pulled it back into his bosom uh, and he shifted it back onto his shoulder and he began uh, to carry that cross toward God Golgotha again the scripture lets us know that at some point in this journey that Jesus was taking with his cross that he was unable to continue the journey we know that at some point uh, he stopped. Uh, at some point uh, he dropped it again. Uh, at some point uh, he may have fell to the ground with it. Uh, and the soldiers uh, beating him uh, and yelling at him uh, and telling him, uh, pick it up, uh, pick it up, uh, pick it up. Uh, it didn't do any good. Because he just couldn't get up again uh, as much as he wanted to uh, as much uh, as he desired uh, to pick up that cross uh, and carry it to Calvary he couldn't do it he couldn't get up one more time and even if he did get up he couldn't pick up that cross again 
He just couldn't do it. And the Bible says the soldiers found one Simon, a Cyrenian. There was a man in the crowd, uh, just any man, uh, just some man that was standing there that was watching uh, this man uh, that was beaten and bloody uh, carry this cross uh, down the street. Uh, this man uh, that watched him fall to the ground uh, in the dust uh, and in the dirt. Uh, amen. All of a sudden the soldiers turned to Simon the Cyrenian and they said, You, uh, you, uh, you get out here. Uh, you pick up that cross. Uh, you pick it up uh, and you carry it uh, for Jesus. They compelled, compelled. They made him. I guarantee it. He didn't want any part of that. Hey Amen. But the soldiers made him pick up the cross. Hey Amen. The, the soldiers made him pick up the burden that Jesus was carrying. Hey Amen. The soldiers made him pick up that blood smeared uh, heavy piece of timber and put it on his shoulder. Uh, amen. Uh, and he began to carry the cross uh, the rest of the way to Calvary for Jesus. I want you to know here tonight sometimes amen when God calls us to do something for him sometimes even though it's the will of God for you to do this thing even though you have given it your best to perform what God has placed before you There are times when even you cannot accomplish the task that God has given you by yourself. Sometimes uh, God calls us to do something for Him, uh, and He gives us uh, something uh, to do. He sends us on a mission. Uh, amen. Uh, he uh, places a burden uh, upon our hearts uh, to see something happen uh, in the kingdom of God. Uh, amen. Uh, and we get all excited about it. Uh, and we uh, get focused on it. Uh, and we begin uh, to give ourselves to that. Uh, and we begin to do uh, everything uh, that is necessary. Uh, everything within our power to accomplish that task. Uh, and sometimes, uh, even though we've done everything that we could possibly do, Sometimes we can't accomplish the task alone because we need help. Sometimes we just need help to finish the job, to accomplish what God has set before us. Amen. Thank you. Hold on to that thought. Praise God. Simon the Cyrenian helped to carry Jesus' cross to Calvary. Jesus was going to be crucified on that cross. And Simon was helping him to get there. Jesus was going to die on that cross. Uh, and Simon was helping him to get there. Here, let me help you get crucified and die. Let me assist you if I can. If I can assist anybody here tonight to get crucified and die, you just let me know. Because uh, I would really like to help you do that tonight. Bolt the doors. <laughs> Jesus said, If any man, we better read it. Matthew chapter 16. 
Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. It says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Everybody say, My cross. Everybody touch yourself and say, My cross. He said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange uh, for his soul? So Simon helped uh, Jesus take his cross to Calvary. When they got to Calvary, they laid the cross down in the dust. Uh, and they called Jesus over. They brought him over. They laid him down on the cross. Uh, and they took the nails. Uh, and they nailed him uh, to the cross. Uh, they stood, they drove those nails through his hands uh, and through his feet. Uh, and they stood the cross up uh, off the ground there. And, they, and Jesus was hanging there on the cross uh, in great pain uh, and great agony. And he was dying a death uh, of great uh, suffering because he loves us uh, because he loves you uh, amen God manifest in the flesh uh, died uh, on a cross uh, because he loves you uh, amen uh, and then uh, he said uh, amen if any of you want to follow after me uh, and do what I just did, then you take up your cross and follow me. Does anybody feel like following Jesus tonight? Amen. Jesus died. Jesus was buried in a tomb. And three days later, Jesus rose again. Amen. And he said, You follow me. Amen. I went to Calvary. I died on a cross. I was buried in a grave. I rose again. Now you, if you want to follow me, pick up your cross and follow me. Amen. Jesus died. He went through the death, burial, and resurrection so that we could be saved from our sins. And he understood. What I want you to understand here tonight... Amen. Uh, is that He's calling each one of us uh, to go through the death, burial, and resurrection with Him. Uh. Amen. Uh, and in the book of Romans, uh, it lets us know uh, that when we repent of our sins, uh, it's like as if we died. Uh, and when we get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the remission of our sins, uh, it's like as if uh, we were buried. Uh, and when we get filled uh, with His Spirit, uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, it's like as if uh, we rose again. Uh, amen. So when we repent uh, and we get baptized and we get filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, when we we're born again of the water and the spirit. Uh, amen. Then we have followed Jesus through the death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. God is calling uh, each one of us uh, to follow Him to Calvary. God is calling each one of us uh, to die to ourselves, uh, to die out uh, to the old man, uh, to die out to the carnal nature. Amen. The Bible says to mortify uh, the flesh. Uh, amen. Uh, to mortify uh, the body uh, with the affections and lusts thereof. I used to smoke. I used to drink. Uh, I used to lie. I used to steal. Uh, I used to manufacture methamphetamines. Uh, I used to shoot methamphetamines in my veins. Uh, I used to shoot cocaine in my veins, uh, heroin in my veins. Uh, I'd mix all three up in a spoon and shoot that in my veins. Uh, hey man, uh, I used to be uh, a sinner. Uh, I used to be lost. Uh, hey man, uh, the state uh, threw me in prison three times. Uh, hey man, not once, not twice, three times uh, they threw me in prison. Hey man, because uh, I was lost, uh, because I was a sinner, because I was a lawbreaker, because I was given into the lust of my flesh. Uh, hey man, uh, but one day uh, I died out to this flesh. Uh, one day I crucified this flesh. Uh, one day I killed this flesh uh, on a cross uh, at Calvary. 
One day I followed uh, Jesus to Calvary. Amen. Uh, I got down on my knees uh, and I began to repent of my sins. Uh, I got down on my knees uh, and I let God know uh, that I was sorry for lying. Sorry for stealing. Uh, sorry for doing drugs. Uh, sorry for hurting people. Sorry for living in sin. Uh, I let God know I'm sorry for living uh, in sin and I don't want to live that way no more. And believe me, you don't want me to live that way no more either. Amen, sister. I died out to my flesh. The death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. Repenting of your sins. Dying out to self. Uh, amen. Coming to a place uh, in your life uh, where you're tired uh, of your carnal nature telling you what to do. You're tired uh, of the lust of your flesh uh, directing your life uh, and making decisions for you. You're tired of giving in, uh, amen, uh, to the lust of the flesh. Uh, tired of giving in uh, to addictions, uh, to alcohol and drugs and cigarettes uh, and sexual immorality and gambling. Amen. The only way to get uh, the victory over those things uh, is to kill the man that is addicted to those things. Uh, amen. You have to kill that man uh, through repentance by letting God know uh, you don't want to live that way no more. Uh, but you want to live for him. You want to serve him. Amen. You want to be born again of the water and the spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if any man will follow after me, let him take up his cross and follow me. Amen. After you die out to yourself, you have to bury yourself. Thank you. After somebody dies, we bury them. This is real simple. You die, you get buried. Amen. You repent of your sins, uh, and then uh, you get baptized. Uh, this is where you get buried. Amen. Uh, you get Lowered down into a watery grave. Uh, amen. You take that dead man uh, that you just killed that was addicted uh, to lust and drugs and things uh, and you bury him in the waters of baptism. Uh, amen. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins uh, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. Peter, let us know that after you repent, you get baptized buried. Amen. Uh, and you take that dead man and you bury him and he's gone forever. And even as Jesus rose again three days later, amen, uh, Paul let us know in the book of Romans, uh, amen, uh, that we can be filled with God's Spirit. Uh, and when we are filled with God's Spirit, uh, that His Spirit giveth life. Uh, amen. When we get filled with God's Spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. When we get filled with God's Spirit, uh, amen, we become a part of the family of God. We're adopted into God's family. Amen. And the Bible says that we are a new man. Uh, it says that we are a new creature. Amen. And so the man uh, that gets filled with the Holy Holy Ghost, uh, amen, is somebody that is not like the old man. Uh, he's a new man uh, with a renewed mind. Uh, amen. I don't think the way I used to think. Uh, amen. Uh, I don't want to do the things I used to do. Uh, amen. I have no desire whatsoever to smoke and drink and lie and cuss and live in sin uh, because of the Spirit of God that dwells inside of me. If there's one thing I want to get across here tonight is that Jesus Christ can change a person completely. Jesus Christ uh, can change uh, the way a person thinks. Uh, it's called putting on the mind of Christ. Amen. The renewing of the mind. Uh, amen. And so, Jesus calls each one of us to Calvary. Each one of us to repentance. Each one of us to baptism in Jesus' name. Each one of us to an infilling of the Holy Ghost. So that we might all become a part of His family. Why? Why? Because.
because of his great love for you and me. One day, when God was manifested on the flesh here on earth, he was walking down a road. He was coming up on a town called Nain. He was walking down this road toward a town called Nain. And he heard something up there in the distance. He heard people. People that were crying and yelling and screaming out. You know, you can tell when people are having a good time at a distance. And you can tell when something is really, really wrong. And there was something really, really wrong going on he walked up this road toward Nain and he came across a funeral procession there was a woman who was a widow she would already lost her husband and now her son had died and they were having a funeral for him they were bringing him outside of the city to the to the graveyard to bury him. This woman who had lost her son was so upset, she was so grief stricken, she was in so much pain in her heart over the loss of her son that she was crying out. She was crying out. Oh! Oh! She was crying out from the anguish of her heart because of the love for her son who was dead. Oh! Jesus uh, came across this funeral procession uh, and he could see this woman uh, and he could see uh, the pain uh, that she was feeling uh, in her heart uh, because she wasn't afraid uh, to let anybody know uh, how she felt. Uh, she was not holding anything back. Uh, she was crying out, uh, Oh, my son, my son. I know what it sounds like when a mother loses her son. Many years ago, I had a very good friend named Alan. Me and Alan used to run around together everywhere. Road dogs. We had each other's back. We did drugs together. We did crime together. Everything together. Everywhere we went. It's two of us. One day, he stole some heroin from a heroin dealer. And he put too much in a syringe. And he stuck it in his arm. And he put it all in his arm. And he went to sleep. And Alan never woke up. I went to the funeral and there were a lot of people crying you know and I felt real bad for my friend who had died and I lost a lot of other friends since to heroin overdose to accidents gunshot but after the funeral My mother brought me over to Alan's mother's house. I don't remember why. Stopped by and give our condolences to his mother. I was kind of scared because I thought she was going to blame me for her son's death. But when we got to the house and asked to speak to his mother... 
the family that was there at the house, they, they said, she's in his bedroom. And friend, you could hear from the front room, you could hear the cry of his mother. It was the most eerie thing I ever heard in my life. She was crying out from her guts. She was crying out from the deepest parts of her heart. I've never heard anybody cry out like that in my life. Uh, and it chilled my heart. Uh, and it turned my blood to ice. Uh, and I thought, oh my goodness, that woman is dying in there it sounded like she was going to die herself and she was lying in her son's bedroom lying on his bed and she was crying oh my son my son oh my son my son and she cried and she cried and she cried we were there for a long time and she just kept crying and kept screaming and kept wailing and it so unnerved me oh my son uh, I'm telling you uh, I understood the love uh, that a mother could have uh, for her son uh, at that time uh, amen uh, and Jesus uh, when he was walking to the town of Nain uh, and he came across this funeral procession uh, and he heard uh, this mother's cry for her son uh, oh my son uh, my son uh, he was moved with compassion the burden that that woman had for her dead son so moved Jesus I'm trying to tell you something here tonight she transferred her burden for her son onto Jesus he wasn't feeling sorry for her son he was moved to compassion, it says, because of her. And he walked over to that casket and he touched it and he said, Lady, here you can have your son back. And he brought that boy back to life and he presented that boy back to his mother alive amen because he was touched by her burden amen I want you to know here tonight that God has a burden for you amen that God loves you that God cares about you and he doesn't want you to be lost let's all stand here tonight God has a burden God's burden in his heart, his love for you, his love for you, amen, that's why he embraced the cross, amen, that's why when he was so beaten down, amen, and he dropped that cross, and them soldiers said, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, that he would reach down and grab it and embrace it again, and he would try to carry it to Calvary because of his great burden in his heart for you. God cares about you. But do you care? That's what I want to know tonight. What I'm trying to do here tonight is transfer a burden. God has placed a burden on my heart. For sinners. God has placed a burden on my heart for the lost. God has placed a burden on my heart for people in addiction.
And what I want to do here tonight is I want to transfer that burden to your heart. I want you to open up your eyes uh, tonight. Uh, I want you to open up your spiritual ears tonight. Uh, amen. God, I'm asking you to open up their understanding uh, tonight. Uh, amen. Uh, God went to the cross uh, to save your soul from a devil's hell. Do you even care, uh, amen, about the fact uh, that he was beaten? Uh, do you even care about the fact uh, they put a crown of thorns on his head? Do you even care about the fact that they beat him on his back? Uh, do you even care about how many times uh, he had to embrace that cross? Uh, amen. Is there something in your heart tonight that says, God, I care? God, I care. Hey, Amen. Is there something in your heart that says, God, I want to be saved? God, I want to live for you. God, I want to serve you. Is there something in your heart tonight, uh, hey man, that says, yes, God, uh, I want to be baptized uh, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the remission of my sins? Uh, is there something in your heart tonight? Uh, amen. Uh, is there just a little bit uh, of a burden uh, in your heart tonight uh, that says, Yes, God, uh, I want your spirit. Uh, yes, God, uh, I want to be filled uh, with the Holy Ghost. Uh, let's all find a place uh, to pray here tonight. I believe that God is talking uh, to somebody here tonight. Uh, I believe the Spirit of God is touching somebody here tonight. Uh, amen. I believe that there's somebody here tonight. Uh, you can feel it in your heart. Uh, amen. There's somebody here tonight. Uh, amen. You know that God is talking to you. That God is calling you. That God uh, is asking you to pick up your cross. Uh, your cross is lying in the dust. Uh, your cross uh, is lying in the dirt. Uh, your burden uh, is lying uh, in the dust. Uh, pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Uh, amen. God uh, is speaking to you tonight. Uh, pick up your cross. Uh, pick up your cross. Uh, pick up your cross uh, and follow me. Some of you, uh, you were carrying the cross, uh, but it got heavy. Uh, some of you were shouldering the cross, uh, amen, uh, but you dropped it. Uh, some of you, uh, amen, uh, are tired uh, of carrying the cross, uh, amen, but I want you to know uh, that God is here, uh, and He wants to shoulder that cross with you. Uh, God is here, uh, and He wants to help you carry your cross uh, here tonight. Hey man, let's find a place to pray and let God know. God, I'll do my best. God, I'll do what you ask. God, I'll listen to your voice. God, I'll take that burden. God, I'll shoulder that cross. God, I'm willing to do whatever I have to do to be saved. I'm willing to do whatever I have to do to live for you. If I have to take up my cross to follow you, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, amen. Tell him tonight. Uh, let him know tonight. 